With a body reminiscent of a gecko, fluttery wings and a natural stockpile of charge light, Microluminous Psyche has an unearthly, if oddly charming appearance. A curious creature by nature, it always gave me the impression that it was studying me as much as I was studying it. A favourite snack of many predators, this small lizard has no natural poisons or any means of defending itself at all, save for a swift retreat and its charge light. Survivors can approach it without fear. As a pet, Microluminous Psyche is happy to clamber up a survivor's shoulder and cling to it as though it never wants to leave. Evenly tempered and easy to care for after being tamed, it is a stalwart companion and an excellent source of charge light. Most commonly found in the upper chambers of the caverns, Microluminous Serenitas is at once elegant and adorable. As with its relatives, it is entirely peaceful and no threat to survivors. After close study, by which I mean very scientific bouts of cuddling, I found that it shares traits with both bovids and cervids. However, in the soft glow of its charge light, Microluminous Serenitas always gave me the impression that were it larger, it would be right at home pulling Artemis' chariot. An exceptionally well-mannered and huggable companion Microluminous Serenitus is an excellent choice of pet for any survivor. Whether it is providing a source of charge light from your shoulder or playfully bounding up beside you, its presence is sure to brighten up your day. <laughs> Microluminous Globulus is best described as a slobbering, roly-poly ball of affection. Just like its kin, it is completely harmless, despite its pronounced fangs. So, if a survivor sees one running towards them, they should prepare to be licked, not bitten. Unfortunately, being so ugly that you're cute is not an effective means of self-defense, which lands it near the bottom of the food chain. Its charge light may intimidate some predators, but it attracts just as many. While Microluminous Globulus has skin reminiscent of lizards or amphibians, its behavior is incredibly similar to a common canine. This has made it a particularly popular choice as a companion and source of charge light. But remember, whatever shoulder you rested on will be covered in drool within minutes. A floating beacon of light often found in the deepest pits of these caverns, Microluminous Electrion's appearance can seem almost heavenly. Its colourful plumage doesn't hurt either. Even without the charged light it emits, it would give any modern bird on Earth a run for its money in terms of pure spectacle. Although its feathery eyebrows might give one the impression that it is related to owls, it is not a bird of prey. It is entirely docile and shows no aggression towards survivors or other creatures. Microluminous Electrion's ability to fly and the ease with which it perches upon a survivor's shoulder has made it a favoured pet among many. Some consider it the most refined of its glowing brethren, but I think they just want to look like a pirate. Not that I blame them. Xenomyzon luminosus is one of the most poisonous aquatic species I've ever encountered. While its trademark glowing tail makes it easy to spot and identify, those luminescent glands are also where it produces and stores a debilitating poison. Xenomyzon has developed a particular fondness for blood, and whenever possible, it will attempt to latch onto human subjects. Once it does, it injects a poison for which there are only two cures, a specialized antidote or time. I would not recommend the latter. While Xenomyzon cannot be brought to heal, some survivors have stored them in fish baskets for other uses. This keeps the subject alive and contained, but not properly tamed. The light bug is believed to be a descendant of the Lampyridae insect family. Typically, an insect with its characteristics will flourish in areas with no known natural predators. However, I believe the light bug population is moderated by the amount of creatures that vie for its charged light source. Despite being the source of a prized resource, many tribes believe the light bug to be sacred and admire it for its illuminance and elegant patterns. Domesticating a light bug would be a complete waste of time. It is not known to have any useful utility or function. I imagine you could save on fuel by using them to light a settlement. 
A highly hostile predator with a pack mentality, Chimerium odiosus has a voracious appetite and will quickly swarm anything that possesses its favorite delicacy, charge. In fact, charge light seems to be crucial to its survival. When in its presence, they are strong and aggressive, but without it, they are weaker and quicker to flee. Though distinct from any known species, Chimerium's appearance is a hideous pastiche of bats and cephalopods. And as an unbiased professional, I have to say, I really hate these bloody things. Honestly. For better or worse, there is no known method of taming Chimerum odiosus. If one must confront these creatures, remember to do so away from any charged light sources, as an empowered Chimerum swarm can punch well above its weight class. Anywhere else, Canis Bargus's powerful muscles, wicked claws, and fearsome countenance would put it near the top of the food chain. Yet in these caves, this common lupine predator resides somewhere in the middle. That said, it is an intelligent hunter with an exceptional ability to adapt. For example, it has learned to utilize the zip lines that survivors have built as a means of travel, all on its own. <sighs> Remarkable. The strong legs of the Canis Bargus make it an effective mount for many survivors, particularly for long-distance travel. While other creatures outshine it when it comes to bursts of speed, its stamina and ability to climb across both natural vines and artificial zip lines makes it a highly versatile traveling companion. The origins of the Nameless remain a mystery, but wherever they came from, these vicious creatures are nothing to scoff at, as they are rarely found alone. Common Nameless act in a subservient role to their pack's alpha, and will quickly heed its call to battle. Though savage in nature, the Nameless are deceptively intelligent. When hurt, they burrow underground to recover and protect themselves from further damage. Fortunately, they are highly susceptible to damage and burns from charge-based light sources, and exploiting this weakness can save a survivor's life. All attempts to pacify a Nameless have failed. Each one has an extremely powerful bond with its pack leader, and for survivors, it might as well be unbreakable. Heterocephalus magnus is a gentle giant that digs for plants and fungi with its imposing front teeth. While foraging, it often uncovers precious resources inadvertently, but survivors should claim them with caution, as this triggers an aggressive response. When threatened, heterocephalus rolls up into a ball to shield itself with the armoured plates on its back, much like an armadillo. It then rolls around like an oversized bowling ball, smashing through rocks, walls, and hopefully, its aggressor. While hardly a ferocious wall beast, Heterocephalus is an effective transport that can carry up to three passengers. In theory, it could also be a siege weapon, as its rolling attack can dent even metal. Fortunately, most survivors use a special saddle that deploys a protective canopy when it starts spinning, which not only keeps them from getting squished, but provides extra protection to the rider and mount alike. Carcinus versitus is the giant cousin of modern crab species, with long, spindly limbs that remind me of the Japanese spider crab and a hard, stony shell. It is much more agile than its smaller brethren, but even more noticeable are its pincer claws. In an extraordinary display of dexterity, Carcinus is able to wield each claw independently and precisely. This allows it to trap multiple targets in its vice-like grip, or hold an enemy in one claw while it smashes a second foe with the other. Many survivors have found Carcinus to be an excellent war steed, as it can snatch enemy riders from their mounts, or grab and throw smaller creatures. However, 
its ability to leap to great heights and its swiftness relative to its size also makes it useful in caravans. Draconis obscurum is a magnificent example of a predator that has flawlessly adapted to its environment. It is surrounded by cavern walls, so it developed powerful claws with which to scale them and colourful plumage on its anterior limbs that let it glide from perch to perch. But most dangerous of all, its active camouflage, which lets it fade into the shadows and stalk its prey undetected. It has even adapted to the Nameless and the Reapers. Draconis feathers will raise in warning when they are near, and this massive, elegant lizard seems to be the Reaper's only natural enemy. With its unparalleled mobility and undeniable power, Draconis Obscurum is a highly sought-after mount. Survivors who successfully bring one back from its nesting grounds will suddenly find these caverns much easier to traverse, and that their enemies have become their unsuspecting prey. Even its saddle and rider are affected by its active camouflage, so a survivor's enemies will never see them coming. More than twice the size of wild Titanoboa exornanto, Serpens Regulus is the largest and most lethal snake I've encountered. With a skull that's more draconic than serpentine, it possesses a powerful bite made even deadlier by the potent venom dripping from its fangs. The unique shape of its skull allows serpents to hunt in a way that other snakes cannot, by burrowing. Once underground, it simply waits for its victims to approach. Fortunately, its forked tail is usually still visible, poking just above ground. Miraculously, survivors have not only managed to tame serpents regulus, but ride it. Some can even stay seated while it lies in wait below ground, though I doubt it's a pleasant experience. While a wild serpent can only be forced out of hiding by fire or explosives, once domesticated, it is easily trained to burrow or surface on command. At home in the cavern's deepest chambers, reapers are towering, terrifying apex predators. Beyond overwhelming their prey with fangs and claws, reapers can burrow underground to set an ambush and fire acidic projectiles from their tails. Yet it is their macabre method of reproduction that is their most frightening feature. Bizarrely, a female reaper's tail doubles as a reproductive organ, but only when piercing human survivors. Once impregnated, the survivor carries the young reaper until it bursts from their chest in a grotesque, disturbing spectacle. If impregnated by a female reaper, I strongly urge that that survivor kill the embryo via exposure to radiation. However, there are rumors that reapers might imprint themselves on a survivor who possesses a reaper pheromone gland. This has led some mad survivors with dreams of riding on the back of a reaper to try seeing the gestation period through to the end. But that is extremely dangerous. Not to mention disgusting. <laughs>